So intelligence is not just something that happens inside individual brains. It also arises in groups of individuals. In fact, I define collective intelligence as groups of individuals acting collectively in ways that seem intelligent. Now, by that definition, collective intelligence has existed for a very long time. Armies, companies, countries, families. These are all examples of groups of people acting collectively in ways that sometimes seem intelligent. But in the last few years, we've seen some very new kinds of collective intelligence enabled by the internet. Think of Google, for instance, where millions of people create web pages, link those web pages to each other, and then all that knowledge is harvested by the Google algorithms so that when you type a question in the Google search bar, the answers you get often seem amazingly intelligent. Or think of Wikipedia, where thousands of people all over the world have created a very large and amazingly high quality intellectual product with almost no centralized control and without even being paid. To take advantage of ideas like these, we need to understand them much better. And that's our goal in the MIT Center for Collective Intelligence. Our core research question is, how can people and computers be connected so that collectively they act more intelligently than any person, group, or computer has ever done before? To help answer that question, in one project we're applying the same statistical techniques used in individual intelligence tests to measure the intelligence of groups. We found that just as with individuals, there's a single statistical factor that predicts how well a group will perform on a wide range of very different tasks. We also found that the group's collective intelligence is only moderately correlated with the average individual intelligence of the group members. So just having a bunch of smart people in a group doesn't necessarily make a smart group. But three things were significantly correlated with the group's collective intelligence. First was the average social intelligence of the group members, their ability to understand others' thoughts and feelings. Second was the degree to which group members participated about equally instead of having one or two people dominate the whole conversation. And third was the proportion of women in the group. More women, more intelligent. Interestingly, that last factor is mostly explained statistically by the first. On average, women score higher than men on the test of social intelligence we used. Soon, we hope to give this test to groups like sales teams and top management teams to predict how flexible and adaptive they'll be in a wide range of situations. We also hope to use these measures to help increase the collective intelligence of groups by, for example, giving them better electronic collaboration tools. In another project, we're letting large numbers of people work on one of today's biggest problems, what to do about global climate change. Of course, this is a very complicated problem, but we now have a way of solving complicated problems that was never possible before. As examples like Wikipedia and Google show, it's now possible to effectively harness the collective intelligence of far more people than was ever possible in human history before. Our goal is to apply this crowdsourcing approach to the problem of what to do about climate change. In the online platform we've created called the Climate CoLab, over 10,000 people from all over the world have created proposals on topics ranging from eating vegetarian diets to adapting to sea level rise, They've used computer simulation models to predict the results of those proposals, and they voted for the ones they liked best. The creators of the winning proposals, as determined by both expert judges and the votes of the crowd, have presented their ideas in briefings at the United Nations in New York, the U.S. Congress in Washington, D.C., and they'll do so this year in a meeting at MIT in November. In the long run, we hope that ideas and work like those in these two projects will help us learn how to connect more and more people and computers in ways that will let them act more intelligently than any people, groups, or computers
have ever done on our planet before. Thank you.